I'm Kate Milliken and welcome to MS Learn Online. The CLIMB study is a long-term study of how MS changes over time. Joining me for this discussion is Dr. Tanusha Chitnis. Dr. Chitnis is the director of the Partners Pediatric MS Center at the Massachusetts General Hospital to Children and she's an assistant professor in neurology at Harvard Medical School and the medical director of the CLIMB study at the Partners MS Center at Brigham and Women's Hospital in Boston. Welcome to MS Learn Online, Dr. Chitnis. Thank you. So what is CLIMB, the CLIMB study? What does it stand for? So the CLIMB study stands for Comprehensive Longitudinal Investigations at the Brigham and Women's Hospital. And what is the study? So the study is a, a, a study, a natural history study of approximately 2,000 MS patients who are followed over a 10-year period. And uh, there's no intervention, so they're treated according to their physician's wishes. Um, but we merely collect information about their neurological status, their MRI status, and also biological samples, such as uh, blood and genetic samples. So out of some of the results that you've gotten from the CLIMB study, what are a few that you have found particularly interesting? So we found that smoking is actually a risk factor for, for, for developing more progressive or earlier progressive disease. Um, we've also found that 12% uh, of our patients may develop something called malignant MS, which means having a disability score of six within five years or walking with a cane within five years. And we've identified some risk factors, including smoking, including being a man, um, as risk factors for malignant MS. And these may be a patient group that needs uh, attention or more aggressive treatment earlier. In addition, we found, uh, we've studied benign MS patients, and we found depending on how you define benign MS, which uh, usually is defined as a disability score of three within 10 or 15 years, um, we found that those patients do tend to still have uh, difficulty with some cognitive and patient-reported outcome measures. Um, if we use a more conservative uh, definition of benign MS, such as an EDSS of 1 or 1.5 within 10 years, then those patients seem to do better overall. So I think we have to be very careful in how we're defining benign MS. Who's e eligible to be part of the CLIMB study? So anyone with a diagnosis of MS who's willing to be followed at the Partners MS Center and is willing to have neurological exams performed every 6 to 12 months and an MRI every year as well as uh, blood draws once a year. So it's a fairly simple procedure. So when you started the CLIMB study in 2001, mm -hmm. I'm sure you had parameters that you were working with to commence the study. Have those parameters changed in terms of what you're giving the people in the study? Yeah, so that's a very good question. Um, so initially we began by studying uh, things like uh, dates of disease onset and relapse rates in patients and as well treatments, of course, and disability scores. We've added MRI and people, uh, patients have standardized MRIs performed on an annual basis. As well, we've added blood draws on an annual basis and genetic testing was added a little bit later on. So um, most of our patients have all of these uh, studies or tests performed. In addition, a number of patients have quality of life or patient reported measures uh, included. And we think that this is a very important uh, way of assessing a patient's response to treatment or just a perception of how they're doing. And we can correlate this with other more standard neurological measures. So the, the testing is continuing to evolve. Exactly, and we're adding questionnaires and taking away things as we move along and, uh, and try to answer new and more exciting questions. And one of the things that has come up recently that's become kind of a hot topic are, are biomarkers and how they're making a difference on people, how people are diagnosed, how disease-modifying therapies are, are you know, distributed to patients. Do biomarkers come into effect with your work? Absolutely. So we're studying a number of biomarkers, including something called antigen arrays, which is basically about 500 proteins or peptides spotted on a, a microchip. And that way we can get a signature of antibody responses from the patient's serum or, or spinal fluid if available. And we have found that there is a signature differentiating MS from healthy controls. And as well, there's some uh, proteins which seem to differentiate primary progressive MS patients from those with relapsing remitting MS. So we're hoping to take these results further and understand, uh, these will help us understand uh, why progression occurs. As well, it may help us understand uh, or identify treatment responders to certain treatments. All right. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Chitnis. This is Kate Milliken for MS Learn Online. Thank you for joining us.